Okay, I get asked this question quite often, so I'm putting this in the frequently asked question section. Uh, it's a two-part question. One is, what is better? Cut roosting grooves, scratches, uh, anything cut into the wood, or is a netting better? Uh, some type of a material that you staple or glue to the inside of the bat house. This is a little bit controversial uh, if you go into bat house builders, and here's why. It is easy to put netting on. It is extremely easy to put the netting on the wrong way, meaning not enough staples or insufficient glue and hold down. And my philosophy is I don't want to build a bat house that could ever come have a problem on the inside, the netting come loose or something of that nature and entangle the bats. Now, this is a, a, a a war of words, if you will, that this is just not a debate that I'm going to get into with other bat house builders who might consider themselves competition or us competition or whatever. I'm just going to say it very plainly. Okay. Cut roosting grooves cannot ever come loose and entangle bats, period. And unless you can 100% guarantee that your netting will never come loose, that the staples will never corrode, that they will ever pop free uh, and tangle up bats and the bats can get hung up in it and it cause the bats to die. Unless you can 100% guarantee that, don't build with it, okay? It's not that hard to do cut roosting grooves if you're doing it yourself. It is extremely difficult to do cut roosting grooves if you want to produce bat houses on the scale that we produce bat houses more than a thousand a year. Um, you know, in fact, we're over that now with the kits that we put out. Um, it, it's very difficult to do that. It's not something that you can do manually. So I'm firmly of the opinion that cut roosting grooves are better than any type of mesh or netting simply because I can guarantee you they will never come loose and tangle up bats. And we have heard of situations where that has happened. We've had people call us that have taken old bat houses down that had mesh in them. Uh, and they found dead bats tangled up inside of them, usually pups that managed to get behind the netting. Uh, the netting should be secured at least, at least every two inches with a staple, if not every one inch with a staple on the inside. The staples should be a good, thick, galvanized staple. They're still gonna corrode over time, but they're gonna stand the best chance. The absolute best staples are gonna be stainless steel staples. They're gonna stand uh, up over time and not corrode and come apart as e easily as the other steel galvanized staples will. So this usually leads to the second part of this question is, how do I cut roosting grooves into the interior of my bat house? Uh, for one-offs and for individuals, it's really not that difficult to do. The first thing you need to understand is that our roosting grooves, uh, now th this is a call bat house I'm building out of call parts. Uh, you'll notice uh, the roosting grooves kind of fade away down here because this plywood is out of spec, it's too thin. So when we machined it, uh, they didn't get cut. But the first thing you need to realize is that our roosting grooves look like this because this is what we can machine easily. We have what is essentially a 532nd inch bit uh, that drops down and about every half inch it makes a cut groove which is about a sixteenth of an inch deep. That's why this looks that way, that's why it's so regular, but that is not necessary. It's not necessary that you reproduce this. What you really need to do is, is pretty much no more than this. Create scarred surfaces on the wood and their little nails can cling right into these scratches. They can cover this entire board. It's not necessary to have the nettings and things like that on there, as long as you've got a good heavy scratch across the board. And the easiest way I have found to do that uh, is to use something similar to a drywall hand saw. Basically, this is a little keyhole saw I picked up at one of the big box stores. Uh, what you want is this tip. Uh, to be pretty solid. Now this one's pretty worn because I use this quite often to uh, build call bat houses where the grooves didn't come in. So I've done a lot of cutting with the tip of this, but it still works fine. 
You can use a handsaw, a large handsaw, gouge it in and pull across, but what you want to do is about every half of an inch to simply gouge this in and pull across. And you can see this made a nice scratch right here. I, my fingernail easily gets hung in there and pulls down. Uh, even here where it's fainter, it's fine. This is what you need for the bats to be able to roost on. So get you a saw everywhere you've got smooth area. Just cut a line in it, watch the wood curl away. They don't have to be regular. Uh, you can do them at an angle. Um, you just don't want to do them up and down. That doesn't do them a lot of good, but uh, there, there's no reason for them to be exactly every half inch. Uh, they can be a quarter of an inch, one inch, uh, three quarters of an inch. Just randomize it, scrape across here. Uh, when you've scarred the area up, like here, we're just going to make all sorts of cuts across here to make roosting grooves. Run across it at a diagonal a couple of times. Run it across this way, run it across that way. That, uh, and you don't even have to remove the wood shavings if you don't want to. Usually you can rake your hand over them or just I've uh, got pretty tough skin so you might not want to do that. <laughs> uh, take a block of wood, run it back and forth to break the large curls off if you want to. Um, but there's no reason. You, you can leave these little hairy things on there. That's not a problem. But that's what you're really trying to do, is to just scar that surface up. So uh, my advice, resist the temptation of putting mesh on it. Uh, it's really not that hard to just get a saw and scar this thing up with something that's going to be reliable year after year and never come loose and endanger the bats. Hope you enjoy the video. Subscribe and I'll keep bringing you more videos.